as you can see here, we have the uh, roof truss here, and this is the steel structure, and the existence of the two columns at both sides are visible here, and we have in one column here and another column on the left side. So each of these columns have a specific cross-section and for the dimension of them you have a table at the bottom of the assignment that you can refer to them to identify what's the value there for the dimensions i will show you later but the submission that you want to do is based on uh, the visualization the view of the trust that you can see here in this picture and you have to draw the similar one no, for your assignment is going to be in a scale 120. So you need to have the title block, you need to make the viewport scale 120 and show your work over there. This is the structure, um, is a kind of the trust. So there are some junctions here, the connections that they have mem between members and columns. Or beam that we have here. We have two beams here, one horizontal and one diagonal. So mm, we have also submission for the connections. What's what are they gonna be visualized? We have connection one, connection three, and connection two here. One, two, three, actually. And then these are the uh, aim of the submission that you have to submit in the scale one five. The point here is you you have to draw one time the whole structure that you have here, and then you visualize it in the layout inside the viewport with the scale 120 for the whole structure, and then in the similar layout or the same layout, you can just change the scale of the viewport to 1.5 and shows connections one by one connection one connection two connection three so you have four submission for this assignment and they have to be in pdf uh, remember you only draw this uh, structure one time so there is no acceptable that you it's not acceptable that you draw the connection separately they have to be completely precise when you draw the whole structure and when you want to show the connections you want to scale viewport for the connections it's a kind of just a scaling and only pan the viewport that you can see the connections uh, inside that viewport for sure when you make it a scale one five it's going to be enlarged that way and uh, all details will be visible perfectly and precisely uh, and this is the general rule for the submission that you have to do and we need title block for each of the uh, layouts that you want to submit with the field information. And the dimensions that you have here is also important. That you have, the all dimensions that you see in this view, they have to be included in the uh, first submission that you have with the scale 120 for the elevation view. As long as this is the elevation view, this view of the picture that you have here. So you have to show the same thing. That means the same with the location of the connections, with the dimensions that you have here, with the center lines that they are in the red color, and uh, all other specifications that you can see here, they have to be visible in your work for the first submission for the second and third and fourth that means the connection one connection two and connection three mm, yeah you have to only because you only focus here so you have to only show the dimensions for the bolts and so that's enough for us and apart from the dimensions that we have here it said that each member and is connected to the gusset plate using one line of three bolts. Okay, and let's first say that for the beginning of your drawing, it's better to start from 
the center lines that you have here. And you can see that there are some red lines here. That's a red line that we represented as a center line, okay, like this. And uh, uh, they extended along all members, beams, columns that we have here. This is a column, this is the beam, and this is these are members that we have inside them. So you, uh, it's better that you draw all red lines first. So as long as you draw the center lines, uh, the center lines can be connected exactly at the points that we have the dimension for them. So their drawing is really simple and easy. As long as that you, this is the kind of the right triangle uh, that you have here with the dimension of 5,000 this way and 2,000 this way, and both on, in millimeters. So uh, when you draw that one and the rest of the red lines, and so it's easy for you that you use the offset and trim to offset the both edges of the, for example, column. If you want to show the flange of the columns on both sides, so you can use the offset of this one for both sides based on the dimensions that you have to look at at the bottom. And then um, I change the line type or the layer that you have to uh, visualize it in the visible line that you have here in the black one. When you draw the center lines based on the given information and dimension actually, then you can offset center lines to both sides for any object that you have here to have both edges of the object. If it's column, beam, or uh, members, uh, doesn't matter, you can do that. But in some cases, you have to see that the, the distances of the, the spacing that you have between center line and both edges are it's a symmetric shape here for the column. So the center line is exactly at the center of the column. But uh, for the other objects like uh, uh, this 2L under 25, 75, 10 is another scenario. It means uh, the center line that you have here has different lengths between the center line until this edge and the center line until the top edge. So um, the value, whatever it is, you have to find it in the assignment and it's gonna be visible in the assignment at the bottom that you can identify what's the value over there. This is here mentioned in the second page that uh, and the distance between the ball center line, that the ball center line are the same center line and in red that you have over there. You can see the picture again. And the angle flange must be 80 millimeter for, two, for L125, 75, 10. So for this angle plane that we have here, this L shape profile, whatever it is, and you need to consider it 80 millimeter from the flange. So we go up, you can see that here, for example, that means this is the L125, 75, 10 here. And let me respond. And also another one you have here. So both this, this object and this object are uh, the same, has the same um, cross section. So uh, let me just zoom in and show you that here, 80 millimeter that it mentioned, that means this line, this red line, should, has a distance or a spacing of the 80 millimeter until the flange that it has. So this part should be 80 millimeter. And the rest of that 70, 125 should be on this part. So it's gonna be useful when you want to use the offset to offset lines both sides. And uh, this is the important part that you have. The, another issue that mentioned also in the assignment is about the having three bolts at the ending of the each member connection. So these are the members that you have and connected to the, for example, connected to connection one here. So you can see that the, you don't know about the gusset plate that wants the dimension of that one. The dimension of the gusset plate as it 
um, actually common spacing, common plates between the members and beams or columns uh, define, is defined based on the number of the bolts and spacing and diameter that they have. So as a rule here, we should have three bolts at the ending of each member. You can see that we have three bolts on change the color. Okay, three bolts at the ending of each each member when they want to connect with the gasket plate. So if you have the diameter of each bolt and if you have the spacing between bolts and you know the spacing between the last bolt and the ending of the object or member. So you can identify where bolts should be and where is this cutting that you have here. And where is this cutting on both sides. When you identify them, so this is, these are the boundaries that you define here and then you can draw the perpendicular line to the object to find where is the location of the gas plate that you are looking for. So the dimension and the form of the gas plate follows the bolts and the spacing and diameter that they have. And we have to consider them precisely. Uh, let me go down uh, with the dimensions and then I come back again for the gas plates uh, and explain this issue for better understanding. Let's see what else uh, given in the assignment. All dimensions are in millimeter fixed. The bolt diameter is 16 millimeters. So it, any bolt that we have here has a diameter of 16 and this is the diameter, remember. So the gusset plate and the cap plate for the left column are 10 millimeter thick. So maybe for the gusset plate is not useful for you, but for the cap plate, it's important that you have the thickness because here in this one, uh, I can show you that this is the cap plate that we have here on the top of the column, left column. This is the cap plate. Uh, and uh, I just draw it like this. So as you consider it, this one as the cap plate, so it has a 10 millimeter thickness. And it's exactly above the column. So the visualization that you will have here is the same. This is the connection that you see with the bolts uh, um, between the column, cap plate, and the beam that you have on the top. So you have to visualize them exactly like this, okay? By considering the cap plate um, with the thickness of 10 millimeter. But the thickness of the gusset plate is another issue. Is that it's not visible here, but you have to take care of the visualization of the gusset plate that you have here. As you can see, there are some blue lines here that they wanted to be distinguishable above the other lines that we have because they are hidden lines here. The gusset plate that you have is located behind of the first object that you have. So uh, from this view, remember, your gusset plate is always behind of your object. So whatever, wherever it has a cross section with the member or the object uh, like beam, so it should be in hidden line. And it's important that to be hidden lines. But the rest of them, uh, like for example, if you consider maybe this part, you can see, or even here, that are visible and there is no member or object uh, as an obstacle in front of them. So they have to be in visible line. So when you want to draw them, you, you have to pay attention to this one. And once again, about the bolts and then we need to have three bolts at the ending of each member to connect with the gusset plate. So as long as you know that this is the gusset plate that you have here, 
okay this is the real gas plate that you have some lines are visible some not some are in hidden lines so the location and that you have to cut it as a perpendicular line here it's up to where is this ending and this ending comes from having three bolts here you have to to have three bolts with diameter of 16 plus some spacing that they have between each other that we will go forward and check it or some plus spacing and for sure it's multiplied by two because we are on we have two spacing center by center okay center to center and then plus uh, the rest of them the center of each bolt until the ending of the object and so and we have the same thing also here that is going to be we have to find the two um, let's call it et that's a and et is the ending part spacing that we have here but later i will show you in the next page that uh, in more details and better visualization you have to consider these spacing uh, for the cutting that you have here let's go forward with this okay all members clearance are five millimeter and the clearance that you have here means in any connections that you have here you have five millimeter clearance so if for example in this one this is the member that you have and you want to just offset it based on the center line that you draw so in the uh, in, in this corner of the member at this point okay at this point this corner is not connected to each other you have five millimeter gap between them from between the nearest corner until the surface of the beam or other object that you have so this sh it should be five millimeter and then you have to cut it so this also has some impact when you want to draw the members. So first you draw the center lines, then you draw members, and in the third step you go for the bolts. And the last step is gusset plates. So you have to follow this sequence when you want to draw to make it easy and not complicated in that case. Uh, it's same in this clearance is for all members that you have here and it's going to be at this end it's going to be at this corner this corner this corner what whatever um, connection that you think that maybe they will have then you need a clearance at that point so you have to consider the clearance for any parts of the object that you have minimum five millimeter in the case that for the nearest one nearest edge or corner that we have oh please uh, consider this one i use the following to determine the location of balls and that is called the e as the edge distance d is the bolt diameter and p is the distance between two consecutive balls so that means a spacing that i told you center to center uh, if you want to consider it here referring to the these values that we have on the top so it said that the e is the edge distance and you can see here for example if you look at today's thing, this photo you can see that the location of the e is defined based on the center of the last bolt that we have until the ending of the member and for the d is the bolt diameter so the bolt diameter you is given is 16 millimeter so by having the bolt diameter you can use these equations to find the minimum p and e for uh, any connection that you have and the p is also the distance between two consecutive bolts or the spacing that i told you in the past so for identifying uh, what's the value of E and what's the value of P, you have to consider these minimums 
and it's better that you use the minimum value or consider it as a p equal to 3d or e equal to one and a half d and then uh, try to have this one remember you have e between the last bolt and the edge of the at the ending edge of the object and also you have e on the other side between the first bolt maybe if you call it as the first bolt and the edge of the gusset plate so the location that you want to cut the gusset plate is should be followed based on this e from the first bolt that you have over there here it's an example and you have four bolts but in your work you only have three bolts so remember that you need only three bolts on the left side you have the similar explanation for other objects for example if you have the eye shape profile on the left side you can see that what's the value for the g or b or something that you have but it's not working with your assignment it's extra material i don't think that you can you need to use them because uh, you don't have this view you only see the view of the eye profile from this view and when you see it from this view you cannot see any g or other parameters here you only have the uh placing of the bolts that you can see at the first place the distances are given remember that for each member with the details that provided here you have different distance between the bolt center line and the angle frame so um, remember to follow these distances these are important and this, at the end of this page, you have the details of the WDW shapes uh, of the profile, IF profile that we have here from the style, and it's gonna be uh, in inside the red one. So you can refer to that one to see which one is useful for you, and in case you can use it. This is the, the actually the guidance of the parameters that we have here in the table on the shape here and when you look at the object from for example right to left doesn't matter this side for example if you look at so and you have to consider what dimensions that's important like t or d they are all important and you can find them here for the t you have two values and use the largest one okay. 